I've been such a long supporter of sustainable farming and animal welfare that when I heard Whole Foods was implementing a new animal welfare rating standard in their stores, I wanted to learn more about it. And I thought that our audience should also. So I've invited one of the participating farmers to talk about the program, Five Step Animal Welfare Rating Program. Uh, while we make um, his delicious recipe for beer braised bratwurst with cabbage, please welcome Paul Willis. Paul, thank you for coming. Yeah, thank it's you. It's really nice to, to have you here. here at the show. So, this this little pamphlet, which is uh, an eye opener, is available at Whole Foods at all the Whole Foods stores, and really it makes you sit up and take notice uh, because it does not leave anything to the imagination, does it? Yeah, that's right. It's that's really, right. really. It's a... So, can you describe the this this five step animal welfare rating program for us? Well, uh, it's a tiered program. All of the steps are, are high animal welfare uh, steps, but it, it, even if you are a step one, which is still very high welfare, you can, uh, you know, as a farmer or rancher, you, you, can, can you can improve, you know, little by so little five if is you the, want to. five is the highest. Hi, five is the highest. And that's the way you want the animals you eat to be raised because, uh, you know, they just, they do pretty horrible things to animals in factory farms, and that's what we do not want to eat those factory farm animals. Yes. And and it's horrifying. I mean, horrifying to me, you know, I saw Food, Inc., you saw Food, Inc. Uh, we need more programs like that, uh, more films like that to really inform us. How did you get involved with this program? Uh, well, I've, I've been involved with Nyman Ranch for many years, and that was really one of the cornerstones of, of you know, what we wanted to do when we started. And we've all, always been interested in uh, animal welfare. And the Global Animal Partnership came along, and it's, it's a there's a, a, a want for a, a third-party independent auditor uh, system to uh, right. to uh, support what we do. So that's kind of how we got involved. So, like step number one, um, this is this is a well a well-raised animal. No crates, no cages, no crowding. Right. Step number mm -hmm. two, enriched environment, which means I mean they might even get to see the sunlight. Well, they would more likely be outdoors, right. uh, pasture systems, deep bedding, things like that. Three is enhanced outdoor access, so they might actually get a little bit yeah, of outdoor access. Yeah, they would, they would access. be outdoors, access, really outdoors, yeah. not just a little door. Four, pasture-centered raising of the animals. Five, yeah. animal-centered, all physical alterations prohibited. What does that mean? Like tail um, docking and... Castration, things all, like that. All that. And then number five plus, animal-centered entire life at the same farm, mm -hmm. which is a happy animal which will taste better and be better for you as a consumer, right? Right, and that would even mean slaughter on the farm, right. which not everybody can do. Right, it's, very, it's, hard to, it's hard to find a farm that is able to do all of that. Mm -hmm. so, um, so why is it important to buy meat uh, raised this way? I know the answer, but please tell everybody. Well, uh, I mean, I think it's important because uh, the, the consumer, it, it, uh, the consumer that supports and buys products like this, act, you know, or they're the ones that really make make and drive this and support farmers that, that and farmers and ranchers that do this and uh, uh, have good uh, animal welfare standards on their farm. If if they don't do that, we're not going to have that as an alternative. Right. And do you think we can reverse what's going on? Well, little by little, I think we can. Yes. You know, I mean, we have so many people and so many hungry mouths to feed. Um, can we raise animals humanely um, so that we feel good about eating them? I mean, it's like, it's really hard. I mean, look, when you hear of a chain, I'm not going to mention the name, but a chain where the meat tested didn't test as beef, doesn't test as any kind of meat that anybody knows, what the heck are they feeding us? Well, that's a good question. Yeah. Where is it coming from? Well, outer space? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, I think that's really an important thing yeah. and, and an important question that a lot of consumers are asking. Whether it's whether it's meat or vegetables or fruit, they want to know, you know, what's the where, you know, what's the chain of demand that leads up to, keep, to this? Is it going to be healthy, good, sustainable yeah, food clean for raised. us? Mm -hmm. Right. Clean raised. Well, Paul is a great cook in addition to being a fine animal raiser. Um, and uh, he's going to cook us some beer braised bratwurst with cabbage. These are Nyman Ranch bratwurst? Nyman Ranch Oh, good. Brats. I love yes. these. I love these. So uh, you have them browning? Uh, browning, uh, this is something that just came out of, uh, you know, what to do if people show up in a hurry, you know? Right. So 
take your bratwurst and then uh, add your your onions and uh, one wayward ring there okay okay well <laughs> and uh, just cook these enough so the onions uh, cook down get tenderized what is it uh, when you talk about bit. Nyman Ranch traceability? What does that mean? Well, uh, oh, I'll do the cabbage. Of course, of course okay. Uh, these these products, of course, come from Nyman Ranch farms, and uh, we we have field agents too that work with our uh, uh, farmers all the time. We have our own high animal welfare standards, and uh, those are your pigs, free ranging. Free free range pigs, uh, outdoor raised, deep bedded, things like this, and uh, you know only only meat that comes from these animals goes into these products. So, uh, Is this what you want me to do, yeah, that, shredding the cabbage? Yeah, that's, okay. that looks perfect. Mm. I love cabbage. So, uh, uh, this is our, uh, these are some of the pigs on my farm well, What here. kind are they? Those well, are happy pigs. These are crossbred pigs, uh, but they are outdoors in the pasture. We shot some of these pictures uh, probably. They're big. A, How many pounds do those guys well, weigh? Well, these are, these are still uh, relatively small. They're probably about 100 pounds here. And you, you know, slaughter them at what, at what uh, weight? Probably about 280. Wow. And I've had the good fortune of tasting Paul's pork. It is so delicious. And if you raise a, an animal humanely and slaughter it humanely, you feel better about eating it. Well, I mean, that's right. And the, and the, the animal feels better about being your food. The, the taste, the flavor. <laughs> I'm not kidding. They really do. <laughs> the taste, the flavor, uh, it's dramatically different. It really so, is. Now, what happens with this cabbage? Now, this goes into... Oh, okay. The, uh... There. Okay, here's the onions browned off. You cabbage in? goes in there, yes. Okay. Mm, I and love this. So, so could you use sauerkraut or would you, would you like to the fresh cabbage? I, I like to use a fresh or okay. you could use Swiss chard or whatever. Oh, be any kind of greens that you, you and have. And tomatoes too? Uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, we'd use fresh tomatoes in season or, uh, you know. And a whole beer? Or yeah. Or part of a beer? Yeah, beer. The whole thing. <laughs> Oh darn! I was gonna. I was hoping that you would say I could have a little swig. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Mm. I just want one little taste. This is the fun part of cooking with beer. Mm. <laughs> there, some salt, some pepper. Yes. Fabulous. So, now, are you always cooking on the ranch? Yeah. And, the, and tell everybody where the ranch is. This is a well, beautiful I, place. Well, it's, it's really a farm, I guess you know, but yeah, we're in North Central Iowa. Our uh, Nyman Ranch uh, World Headquarters is on the farm. I grew up on this farm. And, uh, Look at that. My, and then yeah, here's the end product. Now, this, did Mom teach you how to make this? You, you know what? We just kind of made this up one day when we needed something quick. And, and you uh, make the cornbread, too, out of corn raised on the pastures on which the pigs grazed the year before, right? That's right. So they're fertilizing the fields. Right. And the corn, did it grow really beautifully? Corn grows great. We have really a high quality uh, Oh, there's uh, corn. the cornfield the cor right there. The cornfield's kind of in the background. With a uh, fence around it, I hope. Well, there's an electric fence. Oh, okay. So the, pig, the pigs were there last year, so the, the corn on our farm and the, the hog pasture are part of a rotation. We raise corn, soybeans, oats, hay, and then pigs again. And uh, so I ground this on mm. Monday, this cornmeal. Oh, you did? And, and brought it in oh. today, and Oh, it's here, cooked. cut me a piece. So uh, This looks so good. This is a great Saturday lunch. It's a great cold night supper, isn't it? It's pretty much, it's pretty good any time. And if you're a farmhand on, a, on a, an appropriate farm, this is the kind of food you're going, I guess you'd have to have two sausages, right, if you're a farmhand? Well, uh, yeah. You're going to yeah, be yeah, pretty yeah. hungry. Do you want a big piece or a small oh, piece? Oh, whatever. <laughs> that, looks, that looks good. I want to taste that freshly ground cornmeal. So what kind of corn is that? It's just mm. yellow, actually yellow field corn. It is but really it's, uh, tasty. Uh, so yeah. delicious. Paul, thank you very much, and thank you for raising animals humanely and talking about it. It's great. Well, thank thanks you. for having thank my uh, self and my daughter. We'll be right back.